Hello info person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be playing around with the new update from Universe Sandbox Square and create, as you can tell from the title, the largest galaxy in the universe and then maybe place our own galaxy next to it and then see what happens. So we're going to be creating IC1101 in its all glorious beauty. Let's do this and welcome to What The Mat. So unfortunately for us, uh, even though IC1101 is present in the Universe Sandbox, its size is actually incorrect, um, at least uh, last time I tried it it was. I don't know if the new update maybe have, has changed this a little bit, but I think this is a little bit too small because if I were to place Milky Way next to it, as you can see, it's actually um, not correct uh, representation. The IC1101 is the largest galaxy in the universe, and if you were to look at it right here in Space Engine, you'd see that it basically dwarfs the other galaxies. Every little dot you see on the screen is actually another really large galaxy, but this humongous monster um, is something of its own caliber. This is completely, completely um, overblown in terms of size. The latest paper on this galaxy suggests that it also may possess one of the largest, if not the largest, supermassive black holes in the middle. And uh, the actual study that I'm going to post in the description below um, talks about the center of this galaxy and suggests that um, in the center there's actually a lot of mass missing uh, and the way that the scientists explain this is by suggesting that there was actually a galactic collision that had not one, but two supermassive black holes orbit around one another, kind of like this, basically. This is uh, just two black holes orbiting around one another. And then they slowly came closer and closer together, combined into one ultra-massive black hole, and all of the matter around them sort of escaped uh, from the galaxy. And so the paper talks a little bit more about this, but the idea here is that this created an ultra-massive black hole that's about 40 billion masses of the sun, um, which is dramatically bigger than anything we know. It could be even larger than that, but even at this size, it's already um, roughly around eight to nine times more massive than the famous M87 black hole that we've taken a picture of. This, by the way, is also known as Pawehi. So anyway, back to IC1101. And let's start with essentially creating something a little bit more realistic in terms of both the size, the mass, and the appearance. So first of all, we need to increase its size quite a lot. And here we'll start with the radius. It really should be about this big. So that's about 10 times bigger than it used to be. Um, the mass, we're not really sure about, but let's just make it look something like this and increase the number of nebula so that it looks a little bit more realistic and also make its radius um, of the elliptical ratio a little bit better looking as well. So this kind of looks a lot more realistic than it used to be. And I'm actually really liking what I see here so far. Although maybe this is a little bit too much mass, but we're not really sure because we don't know enough about it, unfortunately. This is actually one of the better pictures we have of it. Um, and okay, I guess it doesn't really look exactly like mine. Mine needs to be a little bit more diffuse. So let's do that. Let's make it more diffuse by reducing some of its mass. All right, so that's that's a little bit better. I think this I can work with. So there is that center in the middle and uh, the rest is that fuse area around the galaxy itself. Now um, it's called IC1101 because it's actually 1101st object uh, discovered in the late 1800s, specifically 1895. And IC uh, stands for the index catalog of um, star clusters and nebula. Now, it's not a nebula, obviously, it's a galaxy, but until 1930s, we didn't actually know that these were galaxies. We didn't really know what galaxy even was. Uh, for the longest time, scientists believed that this was actually just a star cluster. It was a nebula in our own galaxy. Well, it turns out there's a lot more going on in the universe than we believed originally. So um, we have our IC1101. Its um, radius is, I believe, quite accurate. Its mass is also relatively accurate. Everything else here is good. And it has, as you can see, a lot of um, red ancient stars. Most stars here are actually really, really old. They're roughly around um, 
10 to 12 billion years old, which is at least double the age of our own sun. So it's at least um, five to eight billion years older. And all of these ancient stars are also very metal rich. So many of them have planets, many of them have ancient worlds around them. So there's a lot of stuff going on there that is probably mysterious and um, worth exploring, but it's very likely we'll never make it there. Not in our lifetime. Anyway, so now that we have our IC1101, let's place the relatively realistic looking Milky Way. Now, I don't want to place it in orbit because it's just going to orbit. I want to place it just by itself somewhere right here okay maybe a little bit closer it's going to be kind of like the satellite galaxy that unfortunately came a little bit too close to ic1101 and so there it is this is our milky way in comparison to this gigantic um elliptical galaxy so it's sort of hard to compare them even in space engine if you jump to one of the closest galaxies that are here which doesn't actually have a name, this is an irregular galaxy. And then if you were to look at IC1101 in the background, um, it is a little bit overwhelming. It's just such a humongous galaxy with so much mass in it, so many stars. It is just really difficult to even comprehend. So here, if we zoom out, you'll see how gigantic it is. So in that sense, this is actually a pretty accurate simulation of everything that's happening here. Now, I'm going to uh, let the simulation run. I'm also going to increase time. And we're going to see what happens to, I guess, our own galaxy as it slowly jumps into um, IC1101 and as things start interacting. And, uh-oh. Oh, oh no. My IC1101 just fell apart. That is not what I expected. I think I may have actually not added enough mass to hold things together. And so, looks like Milky Way wins round one. Okay, let's try this again. Let's make this a little bit more realistic. Okay, round two. So now, let's just make sure that everything is as it should be. Size is correct. Uh, mass is also seems to be all right. Um, and here we go. Okay, this is a little bit too fast. Let's slow it down a little bit. So there is the Milky Way spinning uh, merrily, trying to survive all of these tidal forces it's going to go through. As it goes through its motions, it's slowly being absorbed into the IC1101. Um, it might be not as massive as I had it last time, but it is a lot more stable now. So, um, so far so good. So far Milky Way is actually behaving like a typical satellite galaxy. But we know that um, when these types of galaxies pass through a um, major massive galaxy, they usually leave a mark, but they also fall apart creating a kind of a ring around the galaxy itself. We have quite a lot of these rings around our own galaxy, formed by various smaller galaxies that came too close to our own, or went inside of it and never came out. And these rings have pretty regularly been discovered now by scientists pretty much um, on an annual basis. So there's a lot of galaxies that Milky Way has swallowed. But now it's time for another galaxy. Oh, that was too quick for another galaxy to swallow ours. And it looks like what we have here, that was way too fast for me to uh, realize what just happened. Okay, that is quite interesting. For some reason, the IC1101 black hole got kicked out of its own galaxy, abandoning the rest um, of the galaxy to kind of be by itself. And so now the entire thing is going to slowly fall apart. Now, um, it wouldn't really happen in real life, mostly because the mass of this black hole is ridiculous. Uh, so I think what really happened here is because the simulation was run at such a high speed, it didn't really calculate the interaction correctly. So that was really kind of my fault. I should have slowed it down dramatically when the galaxies were closer together. So maybe we can do round three. This will be the final round of IC1101 versus the Milky Way. But looks like, yeah, everything here is destroyed. And round three. So this time, hopefully, we'll see something a little bit different. I'm trying to not run the simulation too fast, even though it's already at five to six million years per second. And so here the time is actually running really, really fast. I don't really know exactly where the central black hole of IC1101 is, but it's clear that our Milky Way is being tidally uh, stretched right now. You can see that it's a lot more elliptical than it used to be, and it's being pulled toward the black hole. So here, it's slowly approaching that area. You can see it's sort of being spaghettified in a sense, even though technically the um, term spaghettification really applies to when you're super close to the black hole. But there you go. 
look at how it's being stretched. And okay, the black hole has to be somewhere here because look at that, this is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to slow down this a little bit just so we can admire this in all of its beauty, how our galaxy is being completely destroyed. And so this is literally how our Milky Way acquired all of these other um, nebula and all of these other rings around it by destroying other galaxies in a very similar fashion to what you just witnessed. So round three was the magic round. Now, okay, did I once again destroy IC101? Is it all gone? Looks like it. Looks like the black hole once again disappeared. Um, this is probably because I didn't give it enough mass. I actually did not modify the black hole. But honestly, we'll try this again some other time. Or actually, I think you should try it yourself if you have Universe Sandbox. And if not, follow me on Twitter because I've been giving away a lot of copies. And um, you can obviously either get it from me or buy it yourself from the link in the description. Anyway, on that note, uh, so that's all I wanted to show you. It looks like we have destroyed yet another IC1101 and of course Milky Way. But luckily for us, we got to witness this really, really cool stretching and warping of the galaxy prior to its destruction, which I think was pretty awesome. Anyway, on that note, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.